Thanks. Okay. The big picture of this, or the, the overriding concept that I want to teach you today, or remind you of really, is not to reach to your limit. And um, most of you are getting really good at that with your arms. You're not reaching to your limit with your arms, and that's wonderful. But where it's starting to express itself, or I'm seeing it being expressed, is in the rotation. So if you think about it, if I rotate all the way to my limit, then when I turn back, that is more of an angular approach. It's more like a rectangle with a sharp corner than a curve. So when we rotate, if we start to turn the other direction before we reach our limit, it's softer. It's it's curved on the outer edges rather than straight and a hard turn. And if you're like me, sometimes I, I like the kinesthetic feedback. And so I'll go all the way to my limit so I can almost feel the stop. And that stop is my ligaments and my tendons pulling and, and such. And then I know, okay, now it's time to turn. But that's actually incorrect. It's important to know where your limit is, but once you find that, then I want you to back off of it and, and back off by 10 degrees, 20 degrees. So you, I want you to experiment with that today, that you don't turn towards your limit in every single move we make, that you start the turn before you get to the limit. Years ago, I came up with this uh, visual analogy or this kinesthetic analogy of pushing into a marshmallow. So it's kind of the difference between pushing into a wall where you know where that limit is and then that would rebound you and you push into the other wall, maybe like a racquetball hitting a wall and bouncing off. But what we want to do is kind of push into the marshmallow so that the marshmallow doesn't have an end, what we call in therapy, an end feel. There is no end feel. It's just a soft cushion and you turn around and then a soft cushion and you turn around. So if you're feeling this end feel, then you are over uh, rotating or you're going to your limit. You don't want to feel an end feel. Water does not have an end feel when it flows. Even if it comes up against something that's channeling it in a different direction, it's a soft turning, curving flow. It's not hitting a wall and then dropping down or hitting a wall and then changing directions. If even water, when it hits a wall, it'll express a curve and go another direction. So those are a bunch of visual analogies for you. The marshmallow for me really works so that as I turn, it's sort of a soft and that rebound helps me to turn the other way. As opposed to if I turn and I'm feeling I'm all the way to my limit, then it's angular, okay? It's not good for our body. And from a martial art application, it's not good either. Because if I'm at my limit, when they push on me, they've got lots of feedback as to where they can push me. If I turn and stop before my limit, then it's like kind of falling into a big cushion and they don't, they can't find that place where to push against. Okay. So there's many reasons to not push against your limit or go to your limit. Many reasons to, to change direction and, and move before you get to your limit. So can we just try, the lower body first, all right? So what I want you to do is get in your Tai Chi stance and, and put your hands, let's move my microphone. Okay, put your, put your hands on your quad. And then we're going to rotate. And before you get to your limit, you turn and rotate. Now, if you've been in the habit of going all the way to your limit before you turn, this is going to have to be a new habit for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Just a couple more. And everybody's going to have a different amount of rotation based on the ligaments and tendons of their skeletal system, tightness, shortness. Mm -hmm. 
you almost start to feel if you don't go to your limit that it, it, it kind of rebounds for you. Okay, that's nice. Now let's try it with our uh, push water. Put your hands up and then sitting down and even your stance should not be at your limit. And I'm, I'm real um, guilty myself of wanting to get really low so I can feel that stance. But let's just make it a little higher stance so that it's comfortable. And now turn and when we get our involve, arms involved, that's when we tend to, to go too far. And then turn before you get to your limit. That's too, so right there, uh, too much rotation with your upper body. So your lower body is being, being, is well behaved. It's doing what it needs to, but then your shoulders are going a little more. So you're adding a little more. So it, it looks like instead of here, remember everybody, our shoulders stay over our hips. You're going here and that's what's torquing, possibly torquing your knees as well so that we're not twisting. But remember our buttons. We have a button on our shoulder and on our hip. I don't, we'll revisit that. And I've sewn a nice, delicate silk thread between the, the button on your shoulder and the button on your quad. And that silk thread has to stay in perfect vertical alignment. And so we have this vertical alignment. We have not that, but this vertical alignment. But there's also this one. This is even worse because it's, a, it's really torquing that vertical uh, silk thread and you know it'll pop. So you have to keep it in aligned. So let's try again and just don't add more. Just keep your shoulders over your hips. That's it. Yeah, that's much better. Right there's enough. There you go. Yeah, that's nice, Shirley. That's beautiful. Yes, Winnie, that's nice. Okay, so Feel how that feels and how, how nice that is to your body. You see, so it's, it's floating, it's, it's soft, it's kind. It's creating a healing environment for your body. That's what we want. Our body is abused throughout the day, so this is a time to not abuse our body. Yeah, that's great, good.